Have you ever wondered who truly benefits from the chaos and destruction of war? As we gaze upon the current theater of conflict, the Russia-Ukraine war, one can't help but ponder on the implications of this clash, and the concept of war profiteering that seems to be an inseparable part of such conflicts. Who are the real winners amidst the rubble and ruin? How does this war serve their interests? And more importantly, what keeps the gears of this destructive machine turning? In this video, we will delve into the chronology of events and the beneficiaries of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. To understand the benefactors, we must first revisit the origins of the conflict. Now let's take a step back and look at the timeline of the Russia-Ukraine war. This conflict didn't just spring up overnight, it was a slow burn, a gradual escalation of tensions that eventually erupted into a full-blown conflict. The initial seeds were sown when Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko met with Chinese leader Xi Jinping in a meeting that highlighted their shared views on the war in Ukraine and a commitment to deepening cooperation in various economic and military areas. This was their first face-to-face -face meeting since upgrading their ties to an all-weather comprehensive strategic partnership in 2022. Meanwhile, the tightening of ties between Belarus and China coincided with a decline in Belarus's relations with the West. The Western countries had imposed sanctions on Belarus for allowing Russian troops to invade Ukraine. This move in turn further strained the relationships between Russia, Belarus, and the Western countries, setting the stage for a global conflict. On the economic front, we see German defense group Rheinmetall capitalizing on the situation. With the war in Ukraine escalating, the demand for weapons increased, leading Rheinmetall to raise its sales expectations for 2025. The company even called on the German government to speed up planned big orders and fulfill its pledge to boost the armed forces. Parallel to this, we see Russia positioning itself as a potential mediator in the Israel-Hamas conflict. This move, however, was met with skepticism, as analysts warned that Russia's motives may not be genuine and that prolonging the conflict could serve its strategic goals in Ukraine. These key players, each with their distinct roles and interests, contributed to the growing tensions that eventually sparked the Russia-Ukraine war. The alliances and rivalries formed during this period set the stage for the conflict that was to follow. With the stage set for war, the beneficiaries started to emerge. Now let's delve into who these beneficiaries are and how they stand to gain from this ongoing conflict. War, as grim as it sounds, can be a lucrative business for some. Let's delve into the entities that have found a silver lining amidst the clouds of conflict. In the heart of Europe, German defense group Rheinmetall has seen a surge in demand for their weapons and military equipment. The war in Ukraine has fueled this increase, leading the company to raise its sales expectations for 2025. From air defense systems to military trucks and field hospitals, Rheinmetall is supplying Ukraine with vital support. And with shares up by an incredible 170% in the past year, it's evident that the war has brought significant financial gains for this defense powerhouse. But it's not just defense companies reaping benefits. Countries like China and Belarus are leveraging the war to their advantage as well. China's leader Xi Jinping along with Belarusian counterpart Alexander Lukashenko have seized this opportunity to strengthen ties and express shared views on the conflict. Despite tensions with the US, they've endorsed a political solution to the conflict, positioning themselves as impartial agents of peace. This strategic stance serves to bolster their opposition to the Western-led global order and deepen cooperation in various economic and military areas. And then there's the elephant in the room, Russia. While the motives behind Russia's actions are complex and multifaceted, there are undeniable strategic benefits. By escalating violence in the Middle East, Russia aims to divert attention and resources from Ukraine. This could potentially weaken the commitment of Ukraine's Western allies, while boosting Russia's own interests through increased oil prices. While these entities profit, the question remains, why doesn't Russia put an end to this war? Russia's persistence in this war is driven by more than just territorial gain. There's a myriad of reasons, some obvious, others more veiled. Let's start by unpacking them. Firstly, it's about diverting attention from Ukraine. By positioning itself as a potential mediator in other global conflicts, such as the escalating violence between Israel and Hamas, Russia is attempting to shift the world's gaze away from its actions in Ukraine. By doing so, it hopes to operate with less scrutiny and more leeway. Secondly, Russia is aiming to weaken the commitment of Ukraine's Western allies. The strategy is simple yet potentially effective. 
If Russia can stir up enough global unrest and conflict, the attention and resources of Ukraine's allies will be stretched thin, potentially weakening their resolve and support for Ukraine. Another significant aspect of Russia's motives lies in the economics of war, more specifically, the price of oil. The Middle East from where the Israel-Hamas conflict originates is a major oil-producing region. Instability there often leads to increased oil prices. As one of the world's largest oil producers, Russia stands to benefit greatly from any surge in prices. This could help cover its budget deficits and further fuel its war efforts. But there's also a darker aspect to Russia's motives. By prolonging conflicts, Russia is able to deepen its influence over other nations playing both sides to its advantage. For instance, Putin has cultivated friendly relations with both Israel and Palestine, allowing Russia to have sway over both sides of the conflict. However, it's important to note that these motives are not always met with success. Russia's attempts to appear as a neutral peace broker are often seen as insincere, part of a wider strategy to shift blame onto others, particularly the United States. Russia's motives are complex, but what about the role of NATO in all of this? NATO's involvement in this conflict is a testament to the complexity of international politics. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, is an intergovernmental military alliance between 30 North American and European countries. Its mission is to safeguard the freedom and security of its member countries through political and military means. So, how does Ukraine fit into this picture? Well, Ukraine is not a NATO member, but it is a valued partner. Ukraine's strategic location, sitting at the crossroads between Europe and Asia, makes it a crucial player on the geopolitical chessboard. Its stability directly impacts the security of the entire European continent, and by extension, the security of NATO's member states. The conflict in Ukraine is seen as a direct challenge to the post-World War II order that NATO seeks to uphold. Russia's actions in Ukraine have been viewed as a violation of the principles of sovereignty and territorial integrity, which are cornerstones of the international system. This has led NATO to provide political and practical support to Ukraine. But this isn't just about principles. There's strategy involved too. Keeping Ukraine free from Russian influence helps to create a buffer between Russia and the rest of Europe. This is especially important for NATO's eastern members, who share borders with Russia and have a history of tension with the country. NATO's support for Ukraine is also a message to other potential aggressors. It sends a clear signal that attempts to change borders by force will not go unchallenged. It's a reaffirmation of NATO's commitment to the collective defense of its members and the preservation of international order. NATO's backing of Ukraine adds another layer to this intricate geopolitical puzzle. It's a statement of solidarity, a strategic move, and a defense of the principles that underpin the international system. And it's a reminder that in international politics, nothing is ever as simple as it seems. The Russia-Ukraine war, like any conflict, has its winners and losers. We've navigated through the complex layers of this conflict, shedding light on the beneficiaries and their motives. The war's ripple effects are far-reaching, with nations like China and Belarus strengthening their ties while taking strategic stances, fostering their own agendas under the guise of peace. Companies like Rheinmetall on the other hand, are witnessing a surge in their fortunes due to the increased demand for defense equipment. These beneficiaries driven by their own motives play their part in shaping the course of the conflict. Russia's objectives are multifaceted, from diverting global attention to potentially benefiting from the instability in the oil-rich Middle East. NATO's support for Ukraine meanwhile is a testament to the geopolitical significance of this war, underlining the importance of a united front against aggression. However the future implications of this conflict are not set in stone. The dynamics can shift as the international community continues to respond, and as the people in the region strive for peace. Now that you have a deeper understanding of the Russia-Ukraine war, we encourage you to share your thoughts. Please like, share and comment on this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more insightful content.